I welcome you all for uh, the module 3 lecture 1. Now, we will have a overview of uh, the module uh, 3 in which uh, we will be discussing about uh, limits, fits and uh, tolerances. Now, we will discuss about uh, what are the reasons uh, for size variations during uh, manufacturing and uh, what is the meaning of uh, manufacturing tolerance and uh, fit and what are the limits of work parts like upper limit and uh, lower limit and then uh, what are the various uh, considerations in allocating uh, the tolerances for the work pieces. We will also learn about uh, the uh, some of the related uh, standards and uh, we will discuss about the various types of uh, tolerances, system of fits and uh, what are the various kinds of uh, types of uh, fits and then uh, what is the meaning of international tolerance uh, grade and what is the necessity of uh, tolerance grade and how do we select uh, the kind of uh, fit that is required depending upon the application and then uh, what are the various uh, geometrical uh, tolerances and then uh, we will also learn about the positional uh, tolerances and then we will move to the limit gauging uh, part of uh, the lecture wherein uh, we will be studying about uh, the meaning of gauging and necessity of uh, gauging and how the uh, gauges are classified, how they are manufactured and what are the various types of uh, gauges that are available uh, for the gauging purpose. And then uh, we will also learn about uh, the Taylor's uh, principle of uh, gauge design and what is uh, the gauge makers uh, tolerance and what is VR allowance and then we will uh, have uh, some numerical uh, problems. Now, we will start uh, the first lecture, uh, 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 the product uh, design uh, considerations. Whenever uh, a new product is uh, developed, the various considerations uh, are given for the development, design and development of the product. So, the engineer will uh, look for the functional uh, aspects of the product, what is the size of the product, what, is, what, is the, what are the various applications of the product, what are the various features the product uh, uh, should have, what is the weight and what is the basic requirement of the customer, all those things uh, one should uh, study in detail. And then uh, what about uh, the durability and dependability, dependability of the product. See when uh, the customer purchases uh, the product, he is worried about uh, the uh, reliability of the product uh, and durability, life of the product should exist for a certain uh, period of uh, time. And then uh, the economical aspects of uh, the product, uh, the customer uh, uh, wishes to purchase a good quality material at very economical uh, prices. So, while designing the product, uh, the design engineer should see how the product can be uh, manufactured uh, more economically. And then the, there is a, a relationship between design uh, department and manufacturing department. They will uh, have to sit together and uh, decide about uh, the uh, uh, design and production aspects of the product. And uh, then they have uh, the aesthetic uh, part of the product, uh, the work piece or the product should be pleasing, uh, uh, should have a pleasing appearance. The color of uh, the product and the shape of the product, these are uh, very important aspects uh, which will attract the customers and then uh, how it can be marketed what is the what about the packaging of the product and uh, those things also one should uh, study and uh, it's very important that the product uh, should be always uh, eco friendly it should not affect the environment it should not uh, uh, spoil the environment such uh, things also one should uh, consider and uh, once the period of the life of the product is uh, over, how it can be disposed, in what way it can be easily disposed without affecting the environment. So, these are some of the uh, considerations while uh, designing the product. Now, uh, once the product uh, the design is made and specifications are fixed and uh, the part drawings are uh, prepared, 
all the requirements are built into the, uh, the uh, drawing of uh, the various uh, parts and that is uh, uh, supplied to the manufacturing uh, department. So, in the drawing the, uh, the sizes of various uh, parts are uh, mentioned. Now, uh, we know that it is always very difficult to produce the parts to an exact uh, size. So, when we try to produce the parts uh, to exact size, they, they have to use more precise uh, manufacturing uh, processes like grinding process or lapping process or super finishing process. So, thereby uh, the cost of the uh, product will increase. Uh, 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 so, the, we should always uh, see the what is the functional aspect of the product and manufacturing aspect of the product and then we should uh, fix up the uh, what is the allowable uh, deviation. So, in order to produce uh, the part uh, more economically, some variation in dimension uh, is allowed by the design engineer, uh, which will uh, satisfy the uh, functional uh, requirement. So, the tolerances on uh, meeting parts uh, decides uh, the type of uh, uh, fit. For example, uh, So, the, the design engineer has made some calculations and the design shows that the size of the shaft is 10 millimeter. Now, we know that it is very difficult to produce the shaft exactly to 10 millimeter. So, he will allow some variation in the dimension. Say, uh, the shaft uh, can vary uh, within this uh, size say 0 0.1 mm. That means, the shaft can have uh, uh, the lower limit of uh, uh, 9 point uh, lower limit of 9.9 .9 mm and the upper limit can go up to 10 point uh, h lim higher limit can go up to 10 point uh, 1 mm. So, these are the limits of uh, the work pieces. Uh, if the work piece that is produced is having uh, any size between this uh, 10 point 1 millimeter and 9 point 1 9 point 9 millimeter then it will be uh, acceptable. Now, while uh, specifying uh, the uh, tolerances, uh, we should uh, see what is the functional need of uh, the workpiece. This is very important. For example, say we have uh, a hydraulic uh, a cylinder like this, wherein uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, pressurized uh, fluid is there and it is uh, acting some, there is some pressure. And now, because of this uh, we get a force here, which can be used uh, to move uh, the, move some uh, load. Now, the design engineer should uh, see what is the functionality of this particular product and accordingly he should uh, decide about uh, the tolerance on the shaft as well as uh, tolerance on the hole. If uh, the clearance between these two is more, then uh, the fluid will leak and then uh, the required amount of force uh, we may not get. If it is too tight, then uh, the uh, piston may get jammed in the uh, cylinder. So, such aspects uh, we should always see uh, before uh, assigning uh, the tolerance values. And then the the tolerance that is allowed will definitely affect uh, the manufacturing uh, processes and uh, sequences. So, if you can see this uh, 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 picture, this is the workpiece uh, tolerance. It will have some effects on uh, the manufacturing aspects. It will uh, 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 affect the cost of the pre precision. If the tolerance is very, very uh, tight, uh, for example, instead of 0 0.2, he specifies 0 0.002 millimeter, then uh, the uh, manufacturing section has to select very good uh, or precise uh, machine uh, tools like grinding machine or lapping machine, thereby the cost of the product will uh, increase. And if it is uh, loose, uh, but it satisfies the, uh, the functional needs, then we can go for uh, the uh, 
uh, uh, some uh, processes like uh, fine turning uh, or some rough grinding. So, it will reduce the cost of the work piece and then uh, work piece tolerance uh, will affect what is uh, the process that is to be selected depending upon uh, the whether it is tight tolerance or loose tolerance we have to we can select uh, whether turning is ok or fine grinding is ok or lapping is ok. So, like that and uh, it also affects uh, ease of assembly if uh, the tolerances are very very tight then assembly time required uh, will be more if it is loose it can be very easily fitted so that uh, the assembly time will uh, reduce. And what is the effect uh, on the uh, performance it will definitely affect as we saw in this uh, particular uh, case. So, before the tolerances are assigned it is very very essential that uh, the functional needs as well as the manufacturing aspects uh, should be considered. And then uh, if we provide the proper tolerance uh, on the work pieces then it will uh, 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 we can have uh, the interchangeability uh, concept and it will the parts uh, the replacement of the part becomes uh, very easy since they are available uh, the work pieces are available in the market uh, uh, which are produced uh, uh, using uh, the say, system of fits and tolerances. So, the uh, in case uh, the work pay, the work parts fail we can easily get them from the market and we can uh, fit them and uh, the uh, maintenance of the machine tools becomes uh, very replacement of the parts becomes uh, very easy. Now, uh, we learnt about uh, the tolerances and uh, uh, now, now we will see why tolerances uh, are uh, sp specified. Now, if you see this uh, uh, diagram we have uh, the production uh, system wherein we have uh, various uh, inputs like uh, the human resource and then machine tools, cutting tools and then various uh, measuring instruments etcetera etcetera the raw material. So, these are some of the inputs and then finally, all uh, the inputs are used in a proper way and then we get the output and uh, on the production system always there will be definitely the environment uh, uh, will uh, affect. Now, ideal conditions uh, demand for parts without any kind of dimensional uh, variation, but in actual practice uh, we know that it is uh, very impossible uh, due to the following reasons. Uh, the reasons are variations in the properties of the material being uh, machine for example, the metallurgical property may vary from one place to another place in the raw material at some places it may be very soft at some places it may be very hard and uh, the thermal property of uh, the workpiece also affects uh, the dimensions. And then uh, the production machines themselves have will have uh, some inherent uh, inaccuracies built into them. So, because of these uh, inaccuracies the work pieces produced uh, uh, the size of the work piece produced will uh, uh, vary. And then it is impossible for an operator to make perfect uh, settings like uh, the setting of the cutting tool, setting of the machine tool and then uh, uh, you may always uh, make some uh, mistakes while setting the tools because of that uh, the inaccuracy in the work piece is uh, introduced. Also the environment working in environment will uh, definitely affect uh, the manufacturing process. Uh, the temperature uh, prevailing at the manufacturing site or the humidity because of this uh, the dimensional variations will occur. So, because of that the size of the work piece uh, will uh, vary. Now, uh, there are uh, um, we discussed about some of the reasons uh, why the tolerances are uh, specified and we will uh, discuss about some of these points in uh, detail. The influence of uh, geometric accuracy of machine tools on uh, work piece uh, accuracy. The manufacturer you can see this uh, picture here, uh, the machine tool will have some uh, inherent uh, inaccuracy like uh, the movement of the spindle. It may not be perpendicular to the table. Uh, for example, so this is the movement of uh, the spindle and this is the work uh, table, machine tool table. And now, this may not be perpendicular there will be some uh, error uh, maybe a few seconds or few degrees because of that uh, the, uh, the geometric of the uh, work piece will be affected. Also the movement of uh, the spindle may not be perpendicular uh, to the table also maybe there is then maybe there are some uh, in a, uh, a run out of uh, the spindle is there and then the axis 
I can see in this uh, diagram the axis of the spindle and then the axis of uh, the tailstock uh, they are not uh, in line. So, there is some uh, inaccuracy because of this we may, the, there will be some inaccuracy in the work pieces uh, produced. We may get uh, the uh, uh, drum shape of the work piece or we may get uh, the taper uh, uh, in the work piece which are unwanted. So, spindle ro in a, uh, rotation uh, accuracy uh, uh, plays a major role and then uh, parallelism of saddle movement of the uh, lathe axis. For example, so we have the uh, saddle and we have the guide way and then we have the spindle of uh, lathe uh, spindle axis. So, the movement of the saddle uh, may not be parallel to the spindle axis because of that uh, we may get various kinds of uh, inaccuracies in the work piece and dimensions also will uh, vary. And what about the straightness of the guide way? This uh, uh, lathe guide way may not be straight. So, it may be having some inaccuracies like this. So, because of that also the work piece uh, uh, will be affected. And then squareness of spindle axis with the table surface uh, that is what we discussed uh, in this particular uh, diagram. Then uh, because of uh, deflection of the work piece also uh, the inaccuracy in the work piece is introduced. Now, uh, because of the self weight of the work piece now we can see it has uh, uh, some sag is there in the work piece. Uh, when uh, the uh, this is the ideal uh, machining when there is no uh, bending of the work piece, but actually when it bends like this and when we take the cut once the work piece is removed uh, from the machine tool you may get a shape uh, like uh, this. Also, because of the uh, cutting forces uh, the work piece may deflate say we have a, a very thin uh, work piece like this and when we force uh, the when we press the cutting tool in this direction because of this force it may deflect uh, like this. So, then also we get some inaccuracy in the work piece and uh, the force vibration and charter because of uh, the tool uh, charter tool vibration the surface finish of the work piece is affected as shown uh, here. Now, uh, the tool deflection will also cause uh, the geometry vari geometrical variation of the work piece and dimensional variation of the work piece. You can see here there is a force acting at the tip of the tool because of that the tool is uh, bent like this. So, because of this uh, the we may get some uh, uh, rough uh, surface or dimensional changes as shown in this uh, particular uh, diagram. And the tool wear uh, also will affect uh, the uh, work piece, the various uh, kinds of uh, tool wear, the flank wear or uh, the chipping of the uh, edge of the cutting tool and then uh, the plastic deformation of the tool tip because of the high temperatures developed and then uh, the thermal uh, cracks developed in the tool. The, all these uh, uh, factors will affect uh, the dimensional variations and geometry variations of the work piece. And then uh, error due to location in uh, fixtures, when the work pieces are mounted in the machine tool sometimes uh, the jigs and fixtures are used. Maybe uh, the operator has not selected the proper uh, fixture or uh, you may while putting the work piece in the fixture you may not uh, put them properly. So, because of that uh, the uh, dimensional changes may occur and then error uh, due to clamping of the work pieces. Now, you can see here we have the table machine tool table on which uh, two parallel plates are placed here and then uh, the work piece is uh, uh, placed this is the work piece. Now, and then uh, the using clamps the work piece is clamped. Now, sometimes the operator may place uh, the uh, work P the uh, parallel plates like this and then when uh, the clamping force is applied the work piece will bend like this and now uh, the cutter will cut the work piece uh, like this and then once the clamps are removed the uh, work piece will bring back and uh, we get uh, the inaccuracy in the work piece. Also because of the slide wave friction uh, the movement of the tool will not be proper there will be jerky motion. 
So, because of that the surface finish may get affected or sometimes the geometry is uh, affected. Now, this is uh, the error due to alignment error, the spindle axis or the cutting tool uh, is uh, not perpendicular to the uh, surface. So, because of that uh, there is some error in the work piece. Also the structural deformation due to varying uh, load, the cutting forces will be acting on the structure, the column of the machine tool because of that the column may deflect. So, due to this also the work piece uh, uh, size variation uh, will occur. And then we have uh, thermal uh, deformation due to heat uh, generation. Now, uh, these uh, work pieces they are uh, subjected to expansion and contraction uh, due to the heat uh, that is generated during machining process. So, because of this variation in temperature uh, the work piece uh, will be subjected to it may expand because of uh, the high uh, the higher uh, temperature. Now, you can uh, uh, take the example of a work piece and then uh, the some milling operation is performed on the surface and then after that immediately the operator goes for uh, drilling of uh, two holes like this. Now, the because of the milling the work piece is in the heated condition and immediately it goes for uh, the drilling operation. So, he puts the drill and there is some uh, tolerance for uh, the center distance. Now, uh, once the drilling is over the work piece is removed and then when it cools this uh, because of the contraction the center distance uh, may change. So, like this uh, the, the uh, dimensional uh, changes uh, will occur and also the vibration from other uh, machine tools or other operations. For, for example, in the next room may be there is a, some pressing uh, operation is going on. So, because of that uh, in, uh, the vibrations are introduced. So, the tool may vibrate and uh, it will affect uh, the geometry of uh, the work piece and also the reaction forces uh, acting on the, uh, the various members of the uh, machine tool uh, will lead to deflection of the machine tool and uh, the errors are uh, introduced. Now, in case of uh, NC machines uh, the input uh, interpolation errors uh, will be there because of that. Uh, there will be staircase effect uh, on the work piece like this. If, if we observe this uh, picture, uh, here we can uh, see there is some uh, staircase effect. Okay. So, now uh, other reasons for uh, dimensional changes is uh, servo system errors like uh, dead zone effect and feed drive uh, stiffness, uh, positioning errors of the drives and then uh, thermal uh, drift uh, uh, is primarily caused by feed axis uh, on the basis of recirculating ball screw. See, because of uh, the uh, movement of uh, the ball screw, uh, the heat is generated and because of that the ball screw may expand or it may contract due to thermal uh, changes. So, that will uh, because of that also there will be changes in the dimensions of the work piece. Now, uh, any attempt made uh, to overcome uh, the factors discussed uh, with a view to obtain ideal uh, conditions that is ideal uh, dimensions uh, will uh, lead to very excessive uh, cost. The, so, the part should therefore, uh, be made as inaccurate as tolerable to satisfy the functional uh, requirements. Thus, uh, tolerances are specified to the dimensions of all manufactured parts and these should be just enough to do the intended uh, uh, job. Unnecessary tight tolerances uh, should not be specified. Say for example, uh, plus or minus 0 0.0002 mm uh, uh, should not be specified when uh, point plus or minus 0 0.002 mm uh, will satisfy the uh, uh, need. And then tolerance, uh, we should understand that the tolerance is a compromise between accuracy required uh, for uh, proper functioning and uh, ability to economically produce this uh, uh, work uh, uh, to produce the accuracy. We should always understand uh, that while specifying the tolerance, the need should be satisfied as well as we should consider uh, the manufacturing uh, 
aspect so that uh, the product uh, can be produced at economical uh, ec with economy. Now, uh, we should understand uh, that uh, uh, when the dimensions are specified, there are some uh, functional uh, dimensions and there are some non-functional uh, dimensions. If you see this uh, diagram, uh, there are some uh, dimensions like uh, NF, NF are non-functional uh, dimensions. You can see here, this is the outer surface of this particular uh, curved uh, part, wherein the no uh, mating part will come in contact at this place. So, uh, at this place, very uh, we need not have to specify very uh, uh, stringent uh, tolerances. Open tolerances uh, will be all right. In some places, like uh, see here, F is uh, the functional uh, dimensions, wherein they have a bore in which uh, some shaft will uh, come and it may rotate in the bore or it may slide in the bore. In such cases, uh, uh, we have to. Uh, specify the tolerances uh, with uh, uh, taking lot of uh, care. Now, well, let us try to understand uh, what is the meaning of uh, uh, fit and what is uh, the task of uh, fitting the mating parts. So, we can see here uh, we have a, uh, a bore, bore hole here, we have a part wherein there is a hole and then we have a bush and then there is a shaft. We have to assemble uh, all these three uh, parts. Now, we should understand that uh, the bush uh, will be in contact with uh, the, uh, the body of uh, this particular bearing and there should not be any uh, rotation or movement between bush and uh, the body. So, uh, there uh, the uh, no motion is no sliding or rotation is uh, required. So, these two bush and body should be held uh, uh, tight. And then uh, here we have a shaft which will be rotating in the bush or it may be sliding in the bush. So, there uh, the some clearance uh, is required so that it easily uh, runs or it uh, slides. So, in such cases uh, carefully we should uh, assign uh, the tolerances. The in the olden days uh, such kinds of work were uh, done by the operators uh, called fitters manually. They used to take the shaft and they used to take uh, the mating part that is whole and they used to adjust uh, the size uh, by using scraping uh, or uh, filing operations or uh, some lap uh, tools. So, manually the, uh, the uh, fitting of uh, the jobs was uh, made, it was very slow and it was uh, applicable only for uh, one off uh, uh, situations. Now, uh, with the advent of uh, the high speed machine tools and the interchangeable manufacture, parts are uh, machined in a very precise and uh, repeatable way that uh, they require no individual fitting, uh, manual fitting uh, uh, of the parts. Mating parts could be taken randomly and assembled to get any required uh, fit. This is possible by the use of proper uh, tolerancing and by use of proper uh, uh, fits and uh, tolerances. Depending upon the, the fit that is needed, proper tolerance or proper deviation uh, in the size is uh, allowed. Now, one of the most important uh, considerations uh, when applying uh, tolerance is the fit. What is the kind of uh, fit? I gave the example of uh, the uh, bush uh, shaft and uh, the body. So, between body and uh, bush uh, no movement is required. So, there uh, the tight uh, fit is required whereas, uh, between uh, the shaft and uh, bush some uh, clearance is required. So, that uh, the shaft moves uh, easily. So, their clearance uh, fit is uh, required. Now, depending upon the application uh, it sometimes clearance uh, fit is also used uh, to allow the expansion due to heat due to continuous usage of uh, the work part for example, sliding shaft or the running uh, shaft there will be increase in the temperature because of that shaft may uh, expand and if uh, sufficient space is not available, so it may get jammed in the uh, uh, hole. So, to allow for expansion also some uh, clearance uh, is allowed and then uh, what is the a sliding fit for uh, better positioning is uh, used and sometimes interference uh, fit is uh, used for holding uh, the parts uh, together. Now, uh, another consideration uh, while uh, allowing uh, or specifying the tolerance is the tolerance uh, stack. 
Now, but the design engineer should understand what is the effect of uh, this uh, tolerance uh, stack. We can see here we have uh, three pictures uh, uh, wherein we have uh, four uh, circular uh, features are there with varying uh, diameters and they have uh, the varying uh, lengths with some uh, tolerances. Now, if the tolerance uh, is specified like this as shown in this uh, uh, diagram. Okay. Now, between uh, the size between the power surface B and the surface D, okay, the tolerance between surfaces B and D uh, can be as large as uh, plus or minus 0.15 if th the specification is uh, like this. And uh, if the speci specification of tolerance is like this, okay, then uh, the, uh, the tolerance can be as low as uh, plus or minus uh, 0 0.05. So, this uh, the design engineer should uh, understand and you should carefully assign the tolerances. Now, another important uh, point to be considered is uh, the whether the tolerance is specified on uh, radius or uh, uh, diameter. Now, in this uh, picture you can see the tolerance is uh, provided on the radius. So, 250 uh, plus or minus uh, plus 0 0.001 mm minus uh, uh, 0. Now, uh, in this uh, diagram, the tolerance is provided on the diameter that is uh, 500 plus 0 0.001 mm and uh, lower limit is 500 uh, mm. So, depending upon whether it is uh, placed on radius or uh, diameter, the diameter uh, will vary. A tolerance on a radius uh, might be looser than proposed while uh, the tolerance on the diameter might be tighter than uh, planned should uh, be considered uh, carefully. And then uh, whether any plating or finishing operation uh, is uh, specified on the surface. So, whether plating is required, what is the thickness of the plating uh, that also should be uh, specified, whether the dimension specified in the drawing is before uh, plating or finishing operation or after finishing and plating. So, such things uh, one should uh, consider. And then sometimes uh, the uh, minimum or maximum limits are specified on the drawings. We can see here uh, we have a work part like this and we have a fillet here and uh, the radius of the fillet is uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.015 minimum. Now, uh, if we uh, follow this uh, the uh, operator may produce uh, a part uh, with uh, a radius of 0.125 millimeter. So, as per the specification, this work, uh, this uh, size is allowed, but whether it affects the functionality that uh, we should uh, consider. So, we should be careful while uh, specifying minimum or uh, maximum uh, uh, limits. The functionality we should uh, consider. Now, sometimes compound tolerances are uh, used. You can see here we have a a work part with this particular uh, shape wherein the, there is a tolerance for uh, length at this particular place and there is tolerance for height and then there is tolerance for the angle also. Depending upon the actual sizes of this uh, theta length and height this uh, uh, L will uh, vary. So, uh, while giving uh, all these uh, uh, tolerance values uh, we should uh, see what the functional uh, aspect of this uh, length. So, the dimensional uh, tolerances are uh, key in getting uh, parts uh, what we require and using them appropriately will save time spent uh, coordinating with the manufacturer uh, and avoiding the design issues and reducing unnecessary costs and uh, tolerance stacking or accumulation in assemblies. They control uh, the critical clearances and uh, interferences in a design such as uh, lubrication paths or bearing mounts and thus uh, the performance is uh, affected. And uh, we should uh, understand that tight tolerances will always increase the, the cost of the uh, production and they will also influence uh, the selection of production processes and then uh, the assemblability of the final product will also be affected. So, the uh, Tolerance specification, it is an important link between uh, engineering and uh, manufacturing departments and uh, to open uh, a dialogue based on common interests and competing uh, uh, requirements.
so far we uh, studied uh, about uh, what is the tolerance and what is the fit and why tolerances are specified uh, and uh, what is the need of uh, fit and those things. Now, let us uh, try to understand what are the uh, systems of uh, tolerances. There are two systems of tolerances, uh, one is called unilateral tolerance and the other one is called bilateral uh, tolerance. Now, we can uh, study this uh, picture wherein uh, we have this is the basic uh, size of the component, basic size of the hole or basic size of the uh, shaft and uh, in the case of unilateral tolerance, it is specified on one side of the basic size. For example, 25 plus 0 0.02 mm, 25 plus 0.01 mm. Now, we can see here, this is the tolerance band. So, this is the tolerance band or it is also known as uh, tolerance zone. Okay. So, on one side of uh, the basic size, the tolerance is specified. This is another uh, example. Uh, now, here there is no gap between basic size and uh, the, the lower uh, size of the part. Here, there is some gap between uh, the basic size and uh, the lower size. If I say, we have a hole like this. Okay. We have, this is the hole and then uh, this is the lower uh, limit of the hole and this becomes uh, the upper limit of the hole and this is the tolerance that is uh, allowed. So, the size of the hole can be anywhere between the, uh, this level and this level. So, it can any size it can uh, have. Now, uh, similarly we can allocate uh, the tolerance and tolerance on the other side of the basic size. Here it is plus side of the basic size and here it is the minus side of the basic size. For example, 25 minus uh, 0 0.02 to 25 minus 0 0.01. This is the limit of uh, the uh, work part. Okay. So, only one side of the basic size the tolerance uh, is uh, allowed. Another example is 25. So, this is uh, lower limit is uh, 25. So, this is the lower uh, or upper limit, upper limit of the, if we take this as uh, the hole, the upper size of the hole is 25 and then uh, the, the tolerance is, uh, the lower limit uh, becomes 25 minus 0 0.02 mm. So, this is uh, the lower size of the hole. Okay. Now, what are the advantages of uh, the unilateral uh, tolerance uh, system? Uh, it is uh, easy and uh, simple to determine the deviations and uh, go gauge ends can be standardized as the holes of different tolerance grades have the same uh, lower limit and all the shafts have uh, same upper limit. So, what is this uh, tolerance grade? We will uh, understand uh, after some time. And now, uh, this uh, type of uh, tolerance uh, greatly assists uh, the operator when uh, machining uh, of uh, mating parts the operator machines to the upper limit of the shaft or lower limit of the hole knowing fully well that uh, he still has some margin left for machining before the parts uh, get rejected. So, uh, for example, we have uh, a hole uh, to be drilled, a hole is to be drilled like this. This is the lower limit of the hole and this is the upper limit of the hole. Okay. The, uh, the basic size uh, say it is this is the basic size which is coinciding with the lower limit basic size. Now, it takes uh, the drill tool which is corresponding to this uh, basic size or lower limit and it starts uh, drilling and then uh, there is lot of uh, uh, material left. So, it may the size may increase because of the vibration of the tool, the size may increase, but still the work piece can be accepted. The reason is the upper limit is up to this, upper limit of the hole is up to this. Now, the second type of 
tolerancing is bilateral uh, tolerances wherein uh, we have this uh, basic size and tolerances is uh, tolerance is provided on both sides of the basic size. So, some examples we can see here 25 is the basic size and uh, the upper uh, limit of uh, the shaft is 25.02 mm and the lower limit of uh, the uh, shaft is uh, 24 point nine eight. Now, the basic size is uh, in between uh, these two and the deviation is allowed this basic size is 25 millimeter. So, the deviation is allowed on both sides of the basic size. So, that is uh, bilateral uh, tolerance. Now, another example is 25 plus 0 0.02 uh, mm and 25 minus 0 0.01 mm. So, 25 mm is the basic uh, size and then uh, this side it can go up to uh, 0 0.02 mm and on the negative side it can go up to 0 0.01 mm. So, this uh, system is used in uh, mass production when uh, machine setting uh, uh, is done for the basic uh, size. Now, uh, let us uh, learn uh, about uh, the various uh, standards available which are related to limits, fits and uh, tolerances. Now, we have Indian standard IS 919 and then American system ANSI B 4.1 and then ANSI B 4.2 which deals with uh, metric uh, units and then we have ISO system of tolerances. So, all these uh, standards they uh, follow these uh, ISO system of uh, tolerances and also we have American gauge design uh, standard. Now, uh, let us uh, learn about uh, some of the terminologies uh, related to limits, fits and tolerances as per uh, Indian standard IS uh, 919. Now, uh, we should understand what is the uh, meaning of uh, basic size it is the size with uh, reference to which upper and uh, lower limits of the size are uh, defined. It is the theoretical size of the part as suggested by the designer. So, the design engineer will uh, uh, make some calculations and finally, he will arrive at uh, some size uh, uh, for the shaft say 25 uh, millimeter. So, this is the basic size as uh, designed by the engineer. Similarly, for uh, the hole, the engineer may arrive at some uh, size, theoretical size. So, the designed size is uh, known as uh, basic uh, size. And then we have uh, the terms uh, shaft and uh, hole. Uh, these terms are used to designate all the external and internal features of any shape and not necessarily cylindrical uh, shapes. For example, the hole means uh, the internal features. For example, we have a hole here. So, this feature this is uh, called a hole it need not be a cylindrical uh, shape. Uh, if you have a shape like this square hole or rectangular hole or a triangular hole. So, it is that that is also called uh, a hole irrespective of uh, the uh, shape. It, it basically represents the internal uh, features. Similarly, external features uh, for example, uh, we have a, a cylinder like this, this external feature diameter outside feature is uh, known as uh, shaft. It can be a round uh, uh, shaft or it can be a square uh, uh, shaft or rectangular shaft or a triangular shaft all those external features are known as uh, shafts.
Now, uh, what is the meaning of uh, actual uh, size? It is the size actually obtained after uh, machining. It is found by the actual uh, measurement. For example, so we have produced uh, some uh, hole by using uh, drilling uh, operation. See the design size uh, or basic size may be 25, but after producing what is the actual size? So, which is measured by using some uh, instrument like uh, maybe the micrometer, internal micrometer or uh, vernier caliper. So, the actual size may be 25.02 mm. So, this is the actual uh, size and uh, uh, this is the uh, basic size. And then we have uh, uh, limits of the size. There are two permissible sizes for any particular uh, dimension uh, between which the actual size uh, lays. So, that is maximum and uh, minimum uh, size or the maximum uh, limits and minimum uh, limits. So, if we take the example of uh, the shaft. So, this is the shaft. Now, this uh, shaft uh, the basic size uh, is say it is 25 mm as suggested by the design engineer and he also gives some tolerance uh, it may be 25.01 uh, mm or it can uh, go below 25 by 24.99 uh, uh, mm. So, this is called uh, the upper uh, size or maximum size of the shaft and this is the minimum uh, size of the shaft. And then we have uh, tolerance, the algebraic difference between maximum and minimum limits of uh, size is known as uh, tolerance and it is an absolute uh, value. For example, in this case uh, the difference between uh, the maximum limit of the, the maximum size and minimum size is uh, 0 0.02 mm. So, this is the tolerance for this particular uh, case. Now, uh, let us uh, conclude uh, the session. In this session, uh, we studied about uh, the basics of uh, uh, limits, fits and tolerances, what is the meaning of tolerance, uh, what is the meaning of uh, fit, why the fit and tolerances are uh, required and uh, what are the various uh, types of uh, uh, assigning uh, the uh, tolerances like bilateral tolerances, unilateral tolerance, uh, such things uh, we studied we will uh, stop at this uh, stage. In the next class, we will continue the discussion. Thank you. Yeah.